to introduce myself. My name is Naomi Wallen and I'm a dance teacher. I run the community dance school, Dance Matters. I'm excited to share with you today a little about Makaton Sign Language and how I use it. But don't worry, I'm not going to sign everything today. So let's start with what Makaton isn't. It's not the signing that you see during the news or on late, time, late night TV repeats on BBC Two. That is BSL, that's British Sign Language. That's a language for the deaf and for people with hearing difficulties. It has its own grammatical structure and syntax. As a language, it's not dependent, nor is it strongly related to spoken English. Makaton is supported English. It's a language program that uses signs together with speech and symbols to enable people to communicate. It supports the development of essential communication skills, such as attention, listening, comprehension, memory, and expressive speech and language. It has the same word order as spoken English, and you speak at the same time as signing. However, you don't sign every word in a sentence, just the key components that are relevant. And Makaton is extremely flexible as it can be personalized to an individual's needs and is, can be used at a level that's suitable for that person. The greater the individual's comprehension, the greater amount of detail that can be included. So if you've ever seen Mr. Tumble on CBeebies, you've seen Makaton. Mr. Tumble is funny. Mr. Tumble is our friend. That's his catchphrase. So firstly, we're going to look at Makaton's history. It was created by Margaret Walker, a speech and language therapist. So back in 1968, she started working in an institution. It was called an institution for uh, children and adults with learning disabilities called Botley's Park Hospital in Surrey. Yes, it was hospital. Um, and 1,100 people lived there their whole lives. Expectations of these patients, again, they were called patients, were, um, expectations that these patients could benefit from education and social opportunities were very low at that point. The staff only communicated with the patients with speech. So many patients could not even express their thoughts and feelings, which would lead to frustration. As a speech therapy student, uh, uh, Margaret Walker had used BSL, which is sign language, when she had worked with profoundly deaf school children. So she knew how iconic and explicit many of the basic signs were for everyday life experiences. So she wondered if adding some BSL to just the keywords in speech, whether it might help the patient's understanding. For example, do you want to drink? So I'm only signing the words you and drink. So she spent six months, six months recording the staff speaking to the patients and the patients attempts to respond. So she ended up with thousands of page, uh, pages of results, um, but derived a surprisingly small vocabulary of around 350 concepts, ranging from simple ones like you, me, eat, sleep, good, bad, to some that were more complicated, like to think, to understand, why, because. And so eventually some extra vocabulary was needed to cover community life. And so she extended the core vocabulary to 400 concepts and called it Makaton. It's quite an unusual word. The name is made up from her name, Margaret, M-A, Kathy, K-A, and Tony, T-O-N. Kathy and Tony were workers who had been invited to um, Botley Park. They worked with the deaf and they were invited to teach the staff some more signs from BSL. 
So Margaret Walker established and set up a um, charitable trust. It was called, here's a mouthful, the Makaton Vocabulary Development Project, or the MVDP for short, which is still a mouthful, um, but later became known and is still the Makaton Charity. Following that initial success with signing, they noticed that there were some people with severe physical disability who were unable to make the signs clearly to express themselves. What they needed was a symbol system, something to point at, something to match the words and signs in the core vocabulary. This is a huge task and took another five years to research and design these simple line drawings for grammatical uh, elements such as nouns and verbs and prepositions. Now these symbols are now integral uh, parts of the language programme. The vocabulary, as you can imagine, from the 70s onwards has com continued to be developed and has grown, it's now been arranged into various topics. Uh, there's now seven and a half thousand more than concepts covered and they are still learning new words as the world needs new terms. Um, there's also a growing number of clinicians who use Makaton with clients with dementia or acquired aphasia. Now that's um, a language difficulty that's been acquired following um, a stroke or another brain injury. So that's a really interesting way of how it's um, being developed and used. So let's fast forward to uh, a little about why Makaton is a feature of my life. So as part of my, uh, Dance Matters, we use Makaton sign language in our classes. We're a very inclusive dance school. We have children with disabilities and none, and they're all in the same classes. For example, we have children with autism and GDD, that's Global Developmental Delay, uh, and Down Syndrome. Uh, in fact, one of my helpers is a young lady with Downs. She's the reason I got into Macaton. So I think I should tell you a little bit about my friend, Sarah Joy. I first met Sarah Joy when she was six days old and fresh home from hospital, a brand new baby. She was my best friend's new baby sister. Sarah Joy, or says as everyone calls her, is now 37, so I feel very old. Um, she decided some 20 years ago that she wanted to learn Makaton Sign Language in order, God bless her, to help people less fortunate than herself. <laughs> Says has great communication skills, although her comprehension doesn't always match up. She doesn't use Makaton on a daily basis, she doesn't need it. Although we do use it together in noisy or crowded places, or if I'm trying to explain something more conceptual. So Sarah's wanted to go to some Macaton workshops. She doesn't drive uh, and wanted a buddy to go with, so that's where I step in. I went along purely to be her chauffeur and chaperone, but I ended up loving it. Um, you may have already noticed that I'm a gesticulator. Ah, so signing felt very natural to me. Interestingly, there's a lot of studies into the connection between gesticulation and language. Um, gestures might be simple actions but they don't function in isolation. Research shows that gesture not only augments language but also aids in its acquisition. In fact the two may share some of the same neural systems. Uh, additionally in my case I'm a dancer. Dance for me is about communicating through using your body. I just think that my body understands how to re recreate sign language. So, 2012 was a key year for me. I became a freelance and I had more time to pursue my interests and I took the Macaton for Professionals course. And I certainly confused the rest of the class. So everyone else on the group worked in Catholic social care or in SDN schools. There were social workers, speech and language therapists care home staff and then there's this crazy dance teacher lady. Um, I quickly realised that I found the acquisition of the signs really easy and many on the course didn't and got pretty tangled up and that was a oh that's that's interesting Amy. Hmm. 
at the end of the course, packed up my stuff on the final day, leaving the building, when I heard somebody running down the corridor yelling, Naomi, Naomi, it was the tutor. Uh, and she stopped me to say, you are a beautiful signer. Now, what are you going to do with it? Now that took my breath away, not least because I didn't have an answer for her. So flash forward, still 2012, Christmas. Now I'd been incredibly lucky to be a games maker at the London Olympics that year, all because of the lovely Sarah Joy. She was a games maker and needed support in her role. So I became part of the inclusion and diversity team in order to be with Sez. Such a thrill, two weeks at Wimbledon, brilliant. So Sez, a woman of many talents, she is a tennis player on the British, um, Great Britain Special Olympics team. Now we traveled to the Olympic Stadium before Christmas to sing carols and shake buckets to raise funds for the Special Olympics team. So there we were proudly in our uh, games maker uniforms and we'd had a smashing time. On our way home, we were walking down the platform at King's Cross to get our train home. And I heard running behind us. There's always running in my story. Anyway, games makers, games makers. There's a policeman running behind us. Obviously, Cez and I give each other a, what have you done, look. Can you sign? Asked the copper. Um, yes. We were a bit confused because we hadn't been signing. Anyway, it turned out there was a profoundly deaf chap at the ticket bank area without a ticket or money they couldn't understand him he couldn't understand them could I help and I said mm, maybe I, I don't do BSL but I'll have a go um so they wanted to know where he was going and did he have a key worker so I turned to this chap who was ashen faced by this point and very upset and I said I'm sorry my signing is not great. Can I help you? And oh, it still gives me chills thinking about it, but it felt like the sun kind of came up for him. Somebody spoke his language, however clunkily. It was late, it was Christmas. So the staff decided to let him go on the train and go home. And would we sit together? So we chatted through sign language, he and BSL, me and Makaton desperately asking him to slow down, but we chatted. And it was another of those moments where I thought, okay, world, I, I get it. I'm supposed to be using this. And so, so I created a dance class, especially for children of preschool age. We call it Dancing Hand. It's inclusive so that the children with learning disabilities can participate fully. Um, as part of the group and not as a separate one. We sing silly songs, we sign all the way, we dance and we pretend. Um, and we use Makaton as a route into movement and ballet with our youngest dancers. For example, here's a sign, rainbow. That's, that's rather pleasing, isn't it? Rainbow is a great way for me to start for the bra and arm exercises. You think about round shapes in the, in the sky. So, as you might be able to tell, I'm pretty passionate about signing. I think everyone should learn it. So, let's finish up today with something useful. I'm going to share with you today that phrase that made one man's day. Hello, how are you? Can I help? You never know when you might like it. So, you're ready. Get your hands ready. So, you take your dominant hand. That's the one you write with. That's the great thing about Makaton. It doesn't care if you're a righty or a lefty. Just use the hand that's dominant. So your dominant hand, and it comes up and out. Hello. So don't do that. That's goodbye. No. So hello. And then with your flat hands, they're going to come up the body, and they move up to thumbs up. That means, how are you? Uh, can I help? So you take your dominant hand, and you put it on your not dominant hand and you move it towards the person to which you want to offer help to. So if, they, if, if you're going to help someone else, you might, I'm going to help mum. Or virtually the same is you can ask for help. Can you help me? So let's try those three things. Hello, how are you? 
can I help you? You never know when you might just find that useful. And make sure you speak as you sign. One more time. Hello. How are you? Can I help you? And that's Makaton. And that's how it's become an important part of the Dance Matters story. And I hope that you've been interested in that and that you'll be looking into finding out more interesting phrases that you can never know when you might need.